My name is Miguel Molina. I'm the CTO of Millennium BPO. We're a contact center company located at Colombia. Uh, Colombia is the uppermost uh, country of South, South, South America. Um, Colombia is in, uh, known for uh, Colombian coffee. Uh, as you know, Juan Valdez stores. Uh, it's uh, it's big, vibrant, vibrant culture. Um, and the most uh, of it, we will we'll love technology. And we are uh, Millennium, is, as I told you, a contact center and BPO company uh, with uh, more than 4,000 employees uh, nationwide uh, with five branches, uh, four in Bogota and one in Barranquilla. We have uh, more than 40 business customers uh, on four huge verticals like uh, healthcare, government, and financial, and uh, sales, sales business. Uh, most important thing about us is uh, that our platform is 100% asterisk based. All our telephony and video uh, runs in asterisk, raw asterisk. Uh, we have a full non-stop operation along the year. We have more than 7 million uh, interactions per month, inbound at unbound calls, uh, SMS, and emails, uh, social networks, everything. And we have more than uh, 170 virtual procedure points. It's like a kiosk, but it's more than a kiosk. It has video calls, and uh, you can do paperwork on it, like uh, scanning documents, sending documents to a contact center. Uh, a, little, a little bit about me. Um, bachelor in electronic engineering, master in computer science, and uh, most important, uh, being an asterisk enthusiast for my more than eight years since I started at, at Millennium. And along the years, we as a team, uh, the infrastructure and telephony team has developed all this key stuff, the base algorithm of the predicted dialer, uh, virtualization of the contact center platform uh, back in uh, 2011, high avail availability and mission critical businesses, scalability of the contact center platform to, to support a lot of aging positions. Uh, recently, West RTC based services will, will show that as well. And uh, as you can see, the, that is a scale graphic of, of the growth of the company. So uh, well, this uh, has been a quite good year for the company and better to come. So let's uh, get quickly to our, our agenda. Why virtualization? Um, maybe you are related uh, to it. You, are known, you know it very well. Um, we will be very quick introduction to, to that um, with a little demo. Um, how do we do usually PST and telephony integration? Uh, how, we, we, how we propose a, a concept of contact center in a box? Uh, and I'll, we'll tell you how to implement it on VMware and Sense Server hypervisors. Um, later, how, how do we use it on production? Uh, servers and how could you use it? There are some use cases that might be as useful as it's for us. So why virtualization? Yeah. Um, these are the, the traditional advantages of virtualization. You consolidate server, you improve, improve the, the resource utilization, you increase the productivity, uh, you can de develop technologies for business continuity, uh, you lower the energy bill, everything, you can be, you can scale. And, and we will show it one advantage of virtualization through a video call demo. What we are going to do is, we are going to live migrate uh, a virtual machine from one host to another without uh, any downtime. So, we are going to do a little video call here. Okay, if, it's, if this works. Okay, here we are. 
Now we are starting a WebRTC video call. Hi. Hello there. Uh, let me present you uh, Maria. She yeah. is uh, in Colombia, uh, right uh, at our contact center in Bogota. How are you doing? I'm perfect. Thank you very much for asking. Okay, great. Um, so, we are going to do is a, a little demo. So, we are watching uh, uh, the video call. The audience is watching at it. And we are uh, going to do is uh, at our Bingware asterisk. Uh, the video call is running right in this virtual machine. So, what we're going to do is live migrated. Uh, the host that is running is this address, uh, ended in 196. So we're going to move from that server, from that host, to another host using a uh, functionality known as Vmotion in VMware hypervisor. So we tell it to change it from this server to this one and we'll see what happens. We have K okay, click finish and get back to the video call. It's moving right now. You'll, you'll, you'll see a little little skip, but it's there. The video call uh, has no teardowns. Mm, almost ne 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 there's no no downtime. No downtime and no tear down of the calls. You are there, right? Yeah, I'm here. I listen every everything. Okay, great. So we we'll see that the server move uh, is now running on host ending in two hundred, right? So uh, if it can sustain a video call, it can sustain everything. Everything in real time. We have done it in production, moving more. Uh, machines with uh, more than 200 simultaneous calls and the contact center don't notice it. Uh, so Maria, uh, yeah. how, how's there in Colombia? In uh, uh, the weather today is really nice outside. Actually, it's really sunny and windy, but it's cool. Oh. How's the weather there? <laughs> oh, no, where it's perfect. It's perfect. Uh, this time of year, it's awesome, really awesome too to visit Orlando. I can see. Okay, Maria, thank you very much for your time. You're very welcome. Have a nice day for all of you. Okay, bye. Bye. So, we wanted to show you that for us is one of the biggest advantage. We can full migrate uh, uh, to a newer server, everything. Live. That's one of one of the reasons we can do 24/7 without interruption. Um, but back to our contact center in a box topic. Um, the traditional approach to a contact center uh, um, seven years ago for us was this: everything was was physical servers. So when we needed to do the, the interconnection. We plug in, uh, back in a, a TDM card, name it Digim, Sangoma, Openbox, anyone, uh, to receive the E1 links. And uh, maybe you have the, the, the IVR server right there. And every component resided on a separate uh, physical server. Say your app, your CRM, the VoIP agent server, maybe database and recording, everything you needed was in a separate physical server. So uh, what was the, the, the first evolution when a, a virtualization came, came in? So all this uh, that was running VoIP was uh, virtualizable in uh, some way. So you bought a, a hypervisor and you uh, migrated the physical uh, machines and into, into virtual machines. So you have everything you can virtualize there. 
your app, your killer app, VM, maybe, database, VoIP agents, VM, uh, recording, reporting, uh, whatever. But the PSTN and I, uh, interconnection IVR server remain the same because um, we, uh, we couldn't uh, uh, do nothing with the car inside a hypervisor. There, there was no technology to, to allow that. Um, that was a, a year, year 2000, maybe four years ago for us. And the next step for a lot of us at the contact center uh, businesses uh, is converted to a gateway. So um, I want to virtualize the, IV, the IVR server. So you can do it, but you, you, can, you, you had to um, uh, receive the A1 links or TDM links on, uh, using gateways. Um, you see gateways from Digium, Sangoma, uh, Vega, well, okay, Vega was uh, bought by, some, by Sangoma and any other brand. So f we, we didn't go that, that, that way, but we're seeing a lot of contact centers uh, doing it, uh, uh, buying gateways uh, to get everything in SIP protocol and, and handle it, uh, the rest of it in, in, in virtualization platforms. But for us, was I direct from here to here. Uh, this is what we propose uh, for a contact center in a bus concept. Um, we get the car inside the, the virtualization host um, to receive the, the, the TDM links directly into a virtual machine. So you have the PSTN interconnection virtual machine it could be the same uh, as an IVR machine and the rest of it that is already virtualized. So that is for us uh, today. We, we, we're, we've done it uh, for uh, the last three years with, with a, without an issue. Um, and what uh, technology enables this kind of integration? Uh, the, the two major uh, processor manufacturers, Intel and AMD, uh, designed these technologies, VTD, Virtualization Technology for Directed I.O., and uh, I.O. MMU for AMD. Uh, this, was, this was the, the traditional way uh, to present uh, physical devices on virtual machines before these technologies. Um, what we see here is, uh, this is the hypervisor, uh, and the hypervisor uh, handles the, the, the device driver, the physical device driver, and they do an emulation, and we have another driver for a virtual device that resides in the virtual machine. There's no direct access to the physical device from the virtual machine. And we have to do, to pass, through this uh, emulation uh, layer. Uh, but with direct I.O. VTD or I.O. MMU, uh, the, we have this, uh, this is done in hardware inside the processor. The, the, uh, the hypervisor takes advantage of the DMI remapping hardware that is the processor. So uh, what we achieved is that the, the Physical device is so is as it were physically connected to the virtual machine, so that the physical device driver resides inside the virtual machine, and it handles the physical device directly, and it sees it, processes it, everything directly. Uh, where can I implement this kind of technologies? Any x86 server with a Intel or AMD processor or anyone that supports uh, this kind of technologies, any hypervisor that supports it, and any PCI or PCI Express uh, compatible card that you want to, to assign a, to a guest virtual machine. So, how to implement it on Bingware? It's very easy. When you plug 
PCI T TDM cards, you will, you will see them uh, inside Bingware. So you'll see, this, you'll see it this way, configuration, advanced settings, and sh uh, it will show you the, the card. Uh, so you enable it for, for PCI pass-through technology, and you reboot the server. Uh, what is done uh, behind is uh, some kernel, maybe some kernel parameters that allow the, the DMI, uh, sorry, BTD, BTD technology to, to hook, hook on. And later, uh, you'll see it enabled, ready to, to pass through mode, and it's ready to be assigned to any virtual machine. Excuse me? Yeah, we've done it uh, since version EX, uh, ESXi 4, 5, 5.5, and uh, we're about to test the Beamware 6 version. And uh, back at the virtual machine, you assign it to a PCI to do uh, add the uh, the device as a PCI device, and, and the, the virtual machine is, is ready to use the card. Um, and uh, how to implement it on, on send server? Uh, it's easy, but not that as, as easy as, as Beamware. Uh, but you just uh, have, to have to install a, a send server node and add it to send center uh, client. Um, I, I look for a, a GUI configuration, but the, there is not an option. So you have to go to the console of the host server, do an LSPCI command, and take note of the PCI addresses of the cards. You can see here a Sangoma card, and here a DGM card. So you take note of these addresses. And later on, uh, you have to edit, edit this, this file, slash boot xlinux.conf, and add uh, a PCI back.hide options inside the kernel to, to hide it from the host and leave it available to the virtual machines. And what we do next is uh, use a XE VM list command uh, to take note of the UUID of the virtual machine, and then you assign the PCI cards to each virtual machine using this command, XE VM param, param set other config. What we see here is the, um, the PCI address of the card and the UUID of the virtual machine. After you do that, uh, you turn on the virtual machine and, and it's ready to use the card. So we're going to show you uh, some live virtual machines using that. This is a production machine in, in, in Colombia. This uh, virtual machine handles um, an, eight, uh, an eight port uh, Sangoma card that receives six E1s from the telco provider. This has run a uh, this uh, has now 73 type calls and uh, has been up for four weeks since la latest uh, maintenance. Uh, and has processed more than uh, 100,000 calls and it's there doing it without any issue. You're, you're seeing the console. Calls going in. Um, 
And if we do the LSPCI, you can see the right the right there. There is a car, and this is a virtual machine in Beamware. Um, we have another one. Let's show you another one in Beamware. So we we have here uh, another built, uh, Beamware uh, virtual machine handling a Sangoma uh, card and. Uh, it handles three ones from a mobile uh, telco provider. Oops. Let's turn the verbose off and <coughs> so show the status. So we have three OK E1. Uh, let's see. Has been up for three weeks. And uh, with 84 type calls, uh, it's very busy, 84 out of 90. So <clears throat> it's there and it works with a, without any hiccups. Uh, when, you plug, uh, when you plug PCI cards, uh, you lose the ability to move from one server to another. But what you can do is uh, unassign the PCI card, move the virtual machine to another server, and plug another card, and it will work. And you, have, you don't have to configure uh, virtual machines from, from scratch. So you have all the configuration and everything. So it's pretty straightforward as well. Uh, let's look at uh, send server. Very fast, we're running out of time. But here we have Sense Center. Uh, uh, the lab uh, case uh, I was showing is a back to back text where we have uh, one in one from uh, the Digion card connected back to the Sangoma card. Here are the two virtual machines. Uh, we have running uh, them. Let's see. So we have the calls there. Um, 29 type calls because we are going to use the 30, the 30 call, call to, uh, to show you. OK. Where's Cyber? Come on. Cyper. We are using a VPN connection to, to Colombia. Uh, so I have registered a zip extension from here to this virtual machine. Let's turn the verbose off. And I have the 5001 extension there. Uh, let's dial. Congratulations, you have successfully installed and executed the Asterisk Open Source PBX. You have also installed a set of sample sounds and configuration files that so should help you to get started. Like a normal PBX, you will navigate this demonstration. The call is flowing uh, from the Digium card and the Sangoma uh, virtual machine is uh, answering the call. So you can see that the audio is <coughs> OK, no interrupt issues uh, <coughs> of any kind. <coughs> oh. So send server, <coughs> now where we're looking at a uh, live, <coughs> the uh, <coughs> port E1 card. And uh, this was a four port E1 card I was showing. I was showing you something else. <clears throat> so where it ha has it worked for us? Uh, in the last three years, uh, we are, we're, we're been using uh, IBM System X from N M3 to M5 servers, uh, all range of HP ProAliant server from G5, very old, to G9. 
uh, Dell PowerEdge uh, from 11 generation to 13 generation. Um, we tested uh, with 12 generation, but it had some issues, uh, random issues. Um, it was uh, it, it stopped seeing the car. We don't know why. Um, but uh, this is how our outcome. Uh, but um, where it works, it works really well. Um, hypervisors, like you saw, VMware, ESXi. This uh, version that we're using is 5.5, uh, .5, the latest update, 3. Um, Sun Server, uh, just to show you that another hypervisor works just as well as VMware, <coughs> an open source one. Uh, and uh, we tried, uh, before Sun Server, we tried a Red Hat uh, KVM based virtualization, but it has some serious issues. Um, interrupt uh, losses, uh, um, complete freeze of the, of the server, of the host. Um, so Red Hat Enterprise uh, Linux virtualization solution is, is, uh, was a no-go for us. And PCI Express cards, uh, Sangoma, Digium. We like a, a little more Sangoma, but uh, Digium works as well. And, um, Open box, comp, any other you might see in, a, uh, in the market might work as well because the physical driver is inside the virtual machine. So no modifications needed to, uh, for that to work. Um, now how could you use it in, in, in your business? Uh, maybe if you have a, a physical separate servers, you can increase the, this, the density and utilization of your interconnect servers like we do with, with virtualization. So you get rid of this and you take the cars and you build a virtualization host and uh, you, you gain one server and you gain a lot of things. Uh, another use case we, we, where we could use this is a, a multiple technology telephony gateway. Um, where we could uh, use uh, an analog card to handle analog extensions. Um, there are countries who are still, still using them, uh, maybe old buildings that had the, the cabling for, for it, and another card uh, for E1 links, and another for SS7 links. So uh, you have, uh, if you like a platform more than another that runs in a virtual environment. Maybe you have a an asterisk here, and maybe you have a free switch here, or anything. So you can build uh, a technology just as you want, only on one server. And uh, if you already use virtualization, you can add power to your existing virtual infrastructure with uh, PCI Express transcoding cars. Maybe. Uh, you receive a TDM links over here, but you have a zip trunk with uh, G7029 codec. So you plug a, a transcoding card and uh, assign it to a virtual machine. And uh, uh, what you have is there is a, a lower CPU utilization of the host, uh, better quality of the, car, uh, of the calls. And uh, it could be, could be used to, for teaching as well. Uh, imagine the no, they be Duffer uh, giving a training of, of TDM cards. Uh, we have a server yeah, we, where we assign a, a card to each virtual machine, one for the teacher, maybe uh, four port card, uh, connect uh, one port card of the students so they could practice using real hardware uh, instead of only uh, reading material or online, but very uh, a full hands-on experience of configuring them. So that was it. Uh, thank you very much.